on this latest episode, we're going to be continuing with more on this weekend. As you know, it's coming to a close. We're going to be reviewing, of course, Wrestling Revolver with their L.A. debut show with Unreal, featuring a lot of good matches. And ironically, this is only two days prior before AEW Full Gear. Then we move on, of course, with GCW making their Seattle debut, which is Defy Territory, with Going and Going. And then finally, we have West Coast Pro with Whiplash, featuring, of course, the heavyweight title on the line, Starboard Charlie making his first defense against the Art of Finesse, Chris Bay. And we have two number one contendership matches, one for the women's, one for the heavyweight title. And, of course, the main event features a long-time rivalry between both Chris Hero and Timothy Thatcher. The story goes, Timothy Thatcher has always prevailed between the two. But the obvious question does tell, can Chris Hero finally get that one win? Well, we will find out. And then, of course, to cap things up, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what the events, the promotions are throwing out, who's booked, what matches are set, any wrestlers that have either been signed or departing from the promotions, any injured wrestlers, the whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Right here. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various subjects such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, stories, whatever we want to talk about. And of course, if there's some news updates that I've been unable to do it on this particular episode, I can do it separately. And of course, and other cool stuff you probably will enjoy. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us on the subscribe button and you'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel but if you also like this episode please give us a like on a like button or leave us a nice comment down below now let's begin with our very first review and this is from wrestling revolver making their la debut for unreal as i said before this is two days prior before aew full gear now it opened up with gringo loco taking on Ray Horace. Now, you know this is the type of match. There's going to be a lot of Lucha Libre style high spots wherever it's going to go. But on countless occasions during this entire match, Ray Horace was very close in the in Gringo Loco. But however, it was Gringo Loco with the base bomb that put him away to give him the win. Next up, I have to say this is one of the most impressive matches I've ever watched before. Masha Slavich taking on the Samoan werewolf, Jacob Fatu. I have to say, this was a very awesome match. And I have to say, Masha pushed Jacob Fatu to the limits. Now, normally you don't see that with Fatu. But when it comes to Masha, I think he was very impressed. But, however, it was the mighty moonsault that put away Masha Slavich giving uh, Jacob Fatu the win. However, during the post-match, he even gives a lot of respect and props to Masha Slinch because he said he's never been hard, hit hard by a woman before. And I think he was impressed by her knowing that she can hit harder much as with the men. And I think that's why Masha Slavich has been declared as one of the best wrestlers today due to the fact that she can step up in the ring against the men. So I think Fatu 
is really impressed by her. And of course, the hug and respect between them. Now, our next match, we have the Monster Hunter, Matthew Palmer, taking on Paul Walter Hauser, or as we know him in Cobra Kai, Stingray. Yes, folks, Stingray makes his debut as a wrestler. He was training. I'm not going to BS to anybody. Now, I know people can say, like, I mean, who could forget Bad Bunny? It, it, has everybody forgot what Bad Bunny did in WrestleMania with the Canadian Destroyer? That was impressive. No one thought he could do it. But I have to say, Paul, uh, um, Paul Walter Hauser was, or I, let's just call him Stingray for now on. Stingray really impressed me. But the best way this match ended, of course, is the, a very particular move. If you guys ever seen Cobra Kai, you have the person in the chest, and then boom, right there, he's dead. Just like that. So rest in peace, Matthew Palmer. And Stingray won his match. Now, our next match is for the Revolver Championship in a scramble match. We have Sonico, who is representing Prestige. Or he's been called as the, the ace of prestige wrestling. Then we have Alan Angels, who is the so-called adopted son of Revolver, since he was originally from the prestige brand. Then we have Damian Chambers, who used his golden ticket opportunity to weasel his way into this match. We have, of course, Rocky Romero. And then we have Chris Bay, and then finally champion, the... Um, Jay Chris. Now, I don't know how Jay Chris will definitely try to walk out of this one now. So when it comes to scramble matches, you know anything could go down. So, however, I wasn't I was so impressed with this match. However, in the end of this, it was Jay Chris with the backslide, which is of course a very simple move that put away Sonico for Jay Chris to retain the title. Now, our next match is what we call a hoss fight, but it's a four-way corner hoss fight. We have one called Manders versus Sly Spooky, who is a local in L.A., versus Jake something versus Steve Macklin. Now, you know there's going to be a lot of hard-hitting powerhouse type of match in this one. So, I wasn't too obvious how this was going to roll up, but there were some instant scenes where... Someone was very close in winning, but in the end, it was, of course, um, Macklin with the KIA onto Slice Boogie to pick up the win. Now, ahead of before full gear, we did see Swerve Strickland. Now, those who don't know, Swerve have made his appearances in Re Wrestling Revolver before in the past. However, when I was doing his promo, he was viciously attacked. By Hangman Page, as you know, ahead of their full gear match. Of course, uh, they were able to separate them and all this other stuff by security. Now, our next match, we have the Bounty Hunter, Brian Keefe, taking on Speedball Mike Bailey. Now, you know there was going to be a lot of impressive, but of course, Brian Keefe, the Bounty Hunter, will definitely try to collect. But Speedball, who has been very impressive, you know, as a wrestler, I think was one uh, did a pretty good performance on this one but in the end it was the ultimate weapon that put away the bounty hunter one two three it was over now this next match is a first time ever tag match we have the rascals consistent of zachary wentz and trey miguel taking on the switchblades with the reunited sammy callahan and john moxley now you know moxley and and Callahan will definitely try to bring the violence into this match, which is obvious. Now, the Rascals were almost, much like any other type of match, close in winning. But in the end, it was the paradigm shift by Moxley onto Wentz that picked up the win. Now, our main event, we have Billy Starks and Athena teaming up, taking on what was one-time uh, members of the... Four Horsemen of MMA, Marina Shafir and Ronda Rousey. I thought this was a pretty good match. Now, you probably there were moments where, of course, um, Marina and Ronda had this match won, but of course, um, the kind of way where Athena saves Billy, Billy saves Athena. 
that played out pretty well. However, Athena decided to use her belt onto Ronda Rousey to, pay, to get herself into so much trouble. Now, this match could have ended in a disqualification and win for Marina and Ronda. However, the ref made the decision to call this a no contest. But as soon as Ronda and Marina realized what what was up, they decided to try to get their hands on Athena and Billy, but Billy and Athena skedaddle out of there as soon as possible. Now, I'm sure those two are not going to forget how this match ended. I'm sure they're definitely going to have their revenge. So I think that's it with Wrestling Revolver. Let's move on with GCW. Okay, GCW going and going. This took place on the 17th of November, and this is their debut in Seattle. So if you guys know this, this is Defy Territories, which, which was interesting to hear. Now, our opening match is somewhat of a non-title match. We have Alec Price taking on Jordan Oliver. Now, I knew from this start from this match this was going to be good because, you know, Alec Price has been one of the rising stars so far that we have seen. Jordan Oliver has proven why he is a star to begin with. But I wasn't too sh Now, there were moments I thought Alec Price could beat Jordan Oliver. If that happens, he would have got a JCW title match. And however, that wasn't the case. It was, of course, the cloud cutter by Jordan Oliver in order to win this match. Now, our next match, we have the debut of Nicole Matthews taking on the cutest in the world, Maki Ito. So, you know there's going to be some interesting matches. Not to mention Nicole uh, Matthews being a little bit disrespectful towards Maki. But Maki is not going to take any crap from her one way or the other. But it took only a few DDTs to try to put her down, even outside the ring as well. But it was a huge DD, Planet DDT from off the corner side to put away Nicole Matthews for Maki Ito to win and represent MDK. Now, our next match, we have Jimmy Lloyd versus Sawyer Wreck. Now, this would have been a good match, but it was interrupted by the sudden appearance of our brand new GCW World Tag Champions, Violence Forever. And then all of a sudden, here comes the Bollywood boys, their opponents of today. However, it, all of a sudden, we saw the arrival of Mance Warner and, of course, um, Wong Kong Manders. Now, apparently, Mander is the one in charge of booking. He decided, you know what? Let's make this match into a four-way for the tag title. So this is a big danger for Violence Forever, but it's going to, it's Sora Wreck and Jimmy Lloyd. Teaming up to take on um, the Bollywood Boys, Second Gear Crew, and of course the Champions Violence is Forever, Kevin Koo, and of course, um, what's his name, Dominic Garini. So I thought the match was insane. Of course, it was going to be a lot of plunder used for this match. I mean, it's no secret because that's what Second Gear Crew does, but Violence Forever also tried to do that too. But in the end of this, it was of course Kevin Koo. Who picked up the win by pinning, uh, what's her name, Sawyer Wreck, to retain the titles. So, we'll see what happens. Who becomes the challenger to try to dethrone Violence is Forever. Now, our next match, we have a six-man tag team match. Uh, Laredo Kid, Aramis, and Ray Horace taking on a newly formed uh, team known as Los Desperado, led by Gringo Loco. He teams up with Ar Ares and Latigo. So this is a very this was a very high spot wrestling match. You know if you're a big fan of Lucha Libre, you know there's gonna be the holy shit chance everywhere. But in the end of this, it was once again a a very interesting combination with the with the Canadian destroyer onto Aramos to pick up the win. However, in the post match, Desperados showed a little disrespect to their losing opponents to show them that they are the true supremacy of Lucha Libre. But sooner or later, there will be an opposition to take them down. But I don't know when, 
but it will happen. Now, our next match, we have, of course, the so-called king of the de of, de of the death match, indie guy, whatever I like to call him. He's a total wimp. Matt Cardona takes on Santana Jackson. Now, in this case, from what you can tell, the feud between Cardona and Jimmy Lloyd is far from over. But he told him not to get involved in his match because in Matt Cardona's case, he thought this was going to be a squash match against Santana Jackson. That's right. That's what he thought. But the problem was, from what, of course, the commentators made true. Matt Cardona overlooked Santana Jackson. I mean, he had very successful matches. I mean, we I saw those matches and they were incredible. But of course, that little bitch, Stephanie DeLanders, was going to show up and help out Cardona. But luckily, Jimmy Lloyd showed up to give a helping hand until the Moonwalk DDT sealed the deal from Santana Jackson to pick up the win. Now, don't expect Jimmy Lloyd to do the hee hee. Yep, nope. Don't expect that. He's not going to do that. Now, our next match, we have a trios match. Our first team is, of course, locals from Seattle and part of the Defy promotion. We have Sovereign, uh, consistent of Evan Rivers, Travis Williams, and Ju um, Judas Icarus. They take on Thrusty, uh, Dark Sheik, Alley Catch, and Effie. Now, there is... This was becoming a very interesting match, but Sovereign was in fact or trying to prove they are the supremacy team that in that it is because of course they feel the GCW has invaded their territory. But luckily, all of a sudden, when things were becoming down for Thrutsy, Nick Gage showed up to help out to show them who's boss. But luckily, it was of course um a uh, what was it? It was. Yeah, a combination of a Zack Ryder and lo and leg drop onto I uh, Icarus to pick up the win by Thrusty. And of course, Nick Gage did his little promo thing where his gang is, and he's happy that Seattle has given them great hospitality. Of course, Sovereign are not happy that they're there in the territory, but it is what it is. So we will see more, hopefully, of MDK Gang the next time they show up in, of course, Seattle. So we'll see more of them. Now, our next match is, of course, the GCW World title. Sh local Shaft takes on Blake Christian. Now, you know Blake Christian. He's a cocky SOB that he will determine to do whatever it takes not to lose his precious title because he's desired it for it from the very beginning. But, of course, he was going to pull up tricks. Of course, the distraction with the chair was one. And then, of course, the use of the belt. And then later, finally, the stop. Of course, once again, the little weak dickhead actually walked away again. But I have to say, Shaft did put up a good fight. But, of course, one bit where the other, Blake Christian, will lose that belt. But it has to be with someone who can outsmart him. So we don't know who, but it can happen. Now, our main event, we have Mike Bailey versus Joe Janela. You know there's going to be some great action in this one i mean mike bailey knows how to give a good performance not gonna lie but joey Janela has always been proven why he is one of the faces of gcw um but in the end it was of course mike bailey could have won this match but it was joey Janela with the burning hammer that put away speedball one two three it was over right from there so pretty good show i liked it um, don't know when the next one will show up. I think it's very soon, but as you know, we're almost we're already counting now for the Nick Gage Invitational and the aftermath. So there'll be more to come. But right now, let's move on to our last and final review, and that is West Coast Pro with Whiplash. Okay, our final review, West Coast Pro with Whiplash. This also took place on the 17th of November. 
Now, our opening match, we have Kevin Blackwood taking on Gia Jewel. Now, I have heard of this guy, Gia Jewel, before. But uh, all I know is he plays like this Cajun type of looking wrestler. But it was a very impressive. Now, in the back of my mind, I would have assumed Blackwood would have walked away since he is a very technical, skilled wrestler. But it was, of course, a uh, G Gia Jewel with his move, what they call the inner twist to pick up the win. However, during the post-match, Blackwood, acting like a sore loser, attacked Gia Jewel to set up a point. So basically, refs tried to stop him from hurting him even further, but he didn't care. So that's how it rolled up for him. Now, our next match is a number one contendership for the West Coast Pro Women's Championship. We have Sandra Moon versus Rachel Ellering. Now, this match was pretty good. Now, it's because, of course, Sandra Moon is one of those recognizable wrestlers in West Coast Pros. Rachel Ellering, um, you know, we all know her reputation, not to mention her dad, who he is. That's the reason. But one thing that was impressive. Now, I would uh, this match seemed like it was going to go directly to Rachel Ellering. But somehow, some way, Sandra Moon was able to overturn the pinfall into a crucifix. It was over right there. And she will be facing against Takumi Iroha for the belt. I don't know when, but I'm sure it will happen possibly next month. Now, our next match is a very interesting tag match. We have the Prisoners of Society. Uh, Weston Blake and Steve Macklin, they take on a very strong, um, how to say, newly formed tag team known as Beef Tank, consistent of T Calvin Tankman and Beef. Now, from what I can heard, these guys were the Beef Tank. They were originally rivals, and now they're tag team. And now they're putting their, how do I say, they're trying to prove once again they are should be a dominant tag team, which, of course, commentators made it perfectly clear. We could see them become the next tag champions if that's the case. I think that's something we could expect. But I have to say it was like a hoss fight in this particular match in a tag team setting but it was a combination of superplex and frog splash onto weston blake giving beef tank the win now <coughs> our next match this has become a rivalry between of course la and the bay area the suavecitos uh how do i say representing la consistent of adrian quest danny Ra uh, rose and ricky g Taking on the South Pacific Savages, which consisted of Juicy Finale, Journey Fatu, and Jacob Fatu. So that become it became a North um North California and so and so California feud, that sort of thing. Like think of the East, the the West East Coast, West Coast rap war that we had back in the nineties. But this one well basically from what the commentators saying, the Suave Citos make this personal not professional. So basically, they're trying to prove that they are, of course, a much better team. But from what I can gather, they always find ways to ensure they win the matches no matter what. But they were able to low blow Fatu. Well, Quest was able to low blow Fatu to pick up the win. So that's a very disappointing thing to see, but it that's how it happened. Now, we do get another number one contendership match, and this one features for the uh, world heavyweight title. But however, the winner will face whoever walks out between both Chris Bay and Starboy Charlie. Now, for our number one contender match, we have Alpha Zoe versus Brian Keith. I thought this match was going to be good as well. I mean, Brian Keith, well respected wrestler, um, you know, there to collect. But Alpha Zoe, I have seen him countless times. He was very impressive. But it was the sidewinder that Alpha Zoe did onto Brian Keith to pick up the win. So he has earned his ticket to challenge for the, the heavyweight title. But he has to see who is going to come out. Will it be Starboy Charlie or will it be, of course, um, Chris Bay? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Now, our next match, we have Derek Dillinger versus a mystery opponent. And that mystery opponent is none other than H Hammerstone. 
Uh, yes, Hammerstone, if you guys know, he's the same Hammerstone from MLW. So he has made appearances in this particular promotion. But I can tell you in the end, well, this match also was a bit of a hoss fight match. But it was Hammerstone with the Nightmare Pendulum that picked up the win. Um, of course, Hammerstone put up a pretty good, interesting promo. And that's pretty great, too. Now, however, we did see the uh, all of a sudden the appearance of the West Coast Wrecking Crew. Now, as you, from what I can gather, they were, of course, not happy with the loss that they had against Beef Tech. Now, we have seen time and time again when it comes to rest tag teams like West Coast, Pro, West Coast Wrecking Crew or guys like them saying that they are a well-established team versus wrestlers who just started makeshifting themselves. But apparently there's been like, how do I say, a shift change about saying, okay, who is the dominant tag team? Well, you can say West Coast, Pro, uh, West Coast Wrecking Crew are that team. But however, the Suavecitos, they're like, uh-uh, no way, bitch. This is our territory. So you cannot say that you are the best. But of course, all of a sudden, because they haven't forgotten what happened in their match, the South Pacific Savages even showed up as well. So it became a full-blown a la war with all the tag teams. So now in West Coast Pro, the tag team division has become so hot. So we're going to see what happens then. Now our next match, we have Masha Slamovich versus Johnny Robbie. Uh, of course, Slamovich is the fan favorite here. But of course, out of nowhere, Johnny Robbie was able to cheat her way through by using Masha Slamovich, her belt from the WXW women's title on tour to pick up the win. Now, our next match is, of course, the West Coast heavyweight title. Starboy Charlie makes his first defense against the Art of Finesse, Chris Bay. Now, of course, people probably would have assumed Starboy Charlie would have lost this match. Uh, well, fortunately, that wasn't the case. Starboy Charlie put up one hell of a match on this one. I wasn't too... It, uh, uh, too spectacle about it, but I thought it would be a great performance. But it was, of course, Starboy Charlie with the Gotch style power driver on Chris Bay to retain the belt. So he will be meeting Alpha Zoe and possibly in the next pay per view. So we'll see what happens. Now, our main event this is a long time rivalry between Timothy Thatcher and Chris Hero. These guys go way back, back and forth, you know, winning whoever's going to walk out as the winner. I mean, we know Timothy Thatcher has. Already won many matches against Chris Hero. But can Chris Hero get that one win? Well, apparently he did that when he applied a move that we know that many technical wrestlers, especially wrestlers like Timothy Thatcher, could pull off. We're talking about the Fuji arm bar, and it was over right from there. Now, at the post-match, we did see, of course, Chris Hero taking off his boots, putting them in the ring. Now, he is deciding he's retiring in ring competition. But he will be doing, of course, backstage work. So that's pretty cool of him that, that he's decided, I'm not leaving pro wrestling. I will still stay behind to help the next generation. So I thought it's a pretty good thing for him to do. So there are several matches he kind of announced. But we'll see what happens until then. But for now, I think that's it for our reviews with West Coast Pro. Uh, let's move on with our last thing, news updates. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to our news updates. Now, as you know, in the last episode, I reviewed Choco Pro. Now, I failed to mention something was off about the le the last uh, show they did, number 341. Uh, they did not have a good quality video, so they issued an apology um, towards what happened. Apparently, there was low quality. Some delays were being made. Uh, they were unable to have their backup camera to be there. So basically, um, well, they'll try to f make things better for the next show uh, as we speak. But as you know, they are preparing for their upcoming. I think they should be preparing for their upcoming show, which is the Gato Move Rival. So uh don't know exactly how that one's going to come out, but we'll see what happens. Um. 
As you know, I mentioned this Prestige Wrestling saying they will be for the Roseland Ro Roseland Seven show on the fifth of no of January that takes place in twenty twenty four. There's going to be a four way match for the Prestige Championship. Now we know that um, Alan Angels and Alex Shelley are involved. However, they just added a third participant, and that participant is none other than Kevin Blackwood. So don't know who will be the fourth, but I'm sure that will be announced soon enough. Now, details have been arriving about Santos Escobar since betraying Rey Mysterio and the LWO that he may be forming a new team with a very interesting team. We're talking about Los Lutarios, more consistent than Angel Garza and Humberto Cardio. Now, there were talks about when the LWO was formed, will they have those two guys involved? There were discussions about that. But it seems that we're going to have like a bit of a, a rivalry team of two Latin cultures to get the clash together. So we could see that happening down the line. Um, Brandon Cutler, as you guys know, a longtime friend of the Young Bucks, has posted out on, on, the, on his social media that the Young Bucks are going to be taking some time away from pro wrestling in general. But they're asking... The please not to contact anybody from the Young Bucks camp, like friends or family. Um, they are asking to please respect the privacy. So we don't know how long they'll be gone, but I'm sure that they'll be back better than ever. Now, you may have heard about the most interesting development that happened in, in a Ring of Honor tapings. We saw the arrival of Ronda Rousey. Now, many people have speculated, does this mean that she's going to be, how do I say, signed with AEW? I mean, sure, people are expecting that. However, Tony Khan, during the media scrum after Full Gear, uh, set the record straight for everybody. So this is, from what he said, a one-off only. So basically, you know, making an appearance, that's it. Now, I know some of you may think that's a little horse crap coming from him. But yes, I mean, that's what he says. I mean, yeah, I mean, we could see Ronda Rousey there. But if this is only a one-off, I'm sure there's probably some negotiations taking place. I don't know. But we'll we'll see. Now, speaking of Tony Khan, as you know, there was one question answered. Many people are speculating about the potential signing of Mercedes Monet. Uh, once again, when Tony Khan was at the media scrum, that particular Thing was brought upon again. Um, he did stated um, that she is one of the big stars that has been involved with New Japan and whom I have a lot of respect uh, is Mercedes. Mo I think she is good as anyone and one of the best in the world. So basically, you can tell that he does respect her and appreciates her, but he never indicated whether he will sign or not. I'm sure that there has been consideration of that. But now keep in mind, Mercedes Monet is out on injury that she suffered at one of the New Japan shows for the tournament of the New Japan Strong Women's title. So we don't know. But we do know she has made an appearance with AEW at All In attending the show. And of course, she did the scissors with what's the acclaims signature. So we'll see what happens down the line with them uh, on that. So... If there's any more information about Mercedes Monet, I'll let you guys know as soon as possible. The same thing with Ronda Rousey with this one-off show. And I think that's pretty much it for what we got. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, I'm going to be doing a very special episode for everyone. It's all about the Japanese wrestling. Uh, yes, if you're fans of Japanese wrestling, you know this is the channel for you. Um... As you know, they already begun with World Tag League. That's right. World Tag League is back for another annual tournament. We will see who will walk out as the winner as time flies. But right now, we're going to be entering the early stages. So we'll see how this turns up from start to finish. But I'm also decided to do some other, how do I say, uh, reviews. Uh, there's still the All Japan stuff, DDT, and a very few others. I haven't decided yet, so I'm going to make the next episode all about Japanese wrestling. If you're fans of that, tell your friends, tell your family. If you guys are fans of Japanese wrestling, 
I will be doing the not the next episode. So for right now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.